I don't know if there's anything more terrifying to see than mob mentality. Actually, there is one thing that's worse. Hooligan mob mentality. For me, I don't know if there's a more grotesque thing to witness outside of violence than when people show zero empathy, uh, zero respect for other people, specifically towards strangers, towards the other person. And one of the unfortunately best examples of this is mob mentality and to take it up a notch hooligan mob mentality and so watching the netflix documentary the final attack on wembley about the english fans the percentage of them uh that were outside rioting and drinking for hours and hours before the match even started in london about the european cup final between italy and england it's so horrifying to watch because you you have i don't know if it's the worst of humanity because you know you t you're talking about like there are people in prisons who have done unspeakable things and i'm not saying that everyone who was there was 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 engaging in this or that deserves what i'm about to say but the feeling through watching the documentary is that you're watching some of the worst of humanity at least the behavioral part of it and i've got kind of this weird up and down relationship with watching english football and so while it'd be horrifying to anyone to watch this documentary it hit me particularly hard based on some of the experience I have with being a fan and living there and, and going to matches and stopping going to matches that I, I just want to quickly give you a background because I think it'll it'll help at least clarify my own perspective and, and, and maybe some of you can relate to this. <laughs> Let's go back to the year 2000. I'm sort of surfing around cable. Does anybody remember cable? And I find something called Fox Soccer Channel. And it's an introduction to the English Premier League for me. And in my quarter of a century relationship with English football, this is still the most electrifying time for me. You had players at Arsenal like Perez and, and uh, Thierry Henry and Sol Campbell and Chelsea had Terry and Lampard and, and United had Beckham and Scholes and Giggs and all these players. And it was just a magical time to watch these matches. I'd never seen soccer played so fast and the fans were so intense. It was exciting, it was new, and I was all in. And I think one of the things that makes it great is the intensity of the fans, the reactions that they have. Um, you know, when somebody scores a goal or it's near, you really can feel, even through the television, that the electricity in the air, they've got such a passion for it that it just rubs off on you and you want to like watch more and more and you start to start finding yourself like looking at each weekend like oh, I can't wait for this match even though it's Tuesday like I can't wait oh there's a night game tomorrow oh my god I can't wait and it was it was something that happened to me for I think about seven years cut to 2007 when I moved to England and I lived there and I thought this is gonna be the greatest I'm gonna be so close to English football matches and and I'm gonna be right in the thick of it reading the papers and uh, talking to people at, at the pub and all that and uh, none of that happened but the thing that disturbed me was going to matches. And, and I only went to a handful, but that was pretty much all it took. There's something off-putting when you go to a sports match of any kind and there are police on horseback. On the one hand, it's the police that are kind of intimidating, but really it's kind of more about why they're there. I want to be very careful here because I loved living in England and there's a lot of things that I love about England. The intensity at football matches is also one of those things that I love because it's one of the attractive qualities of the game. But in my experience, it was disturbing at how far it went. There's nothing worse in the world than feeling like you're not secure, that you're not safe. And there were a couple times where I went to matches with everyone flooding off of the tube from from the train to the to the pitch and back where there's these kind of like moments that where, where things could go off and there's chanting and it's it's not like there's nothing equivalent to that in America there there are intense fans and bases but they don't sing like that and they don't they don't they don't drink like that i mean don't get me wrong there's a lot of americans who drink and it's a big part of all those games they make a lot of sales 
but there's an intensity there that I don't think is can be matched in the States. I don't know about other countries. It's a unique brand of intensity. And I kind of found myself at times through various matches just sort of listening. The focus came off of the game and I started looking around thinking like, I don't know if every people are drunk. They're starting to yell in a way that makes me feel like we're at the House of Commons or like we're like in a war on, 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 a, on like a battlefield in like 1546. And as much as I loved the game and I, and I loved the matches, it was too much for me and I walked away from it. And when I moved back to the States, um, I didn't care about English football anymore. In fact, I never wanted to watch any games. It soured me on the whole thing. Now eventually I did come back because I didn't want the people who behaved like that. And, I, and I'm not saying that it's a high percentage. I don't know what the percentage is, but there's a, per, there's a high enough percentage to where it warrants cops on horseback and for there to be problems and for documentaries like the final attack on Wembley to be made or um, being banned. The people who died in Brussels in 1985, I think, at the European Cup final. There are enough bans and things that still go on that are still happening that it's a problem. But I'm not saying that it's all of the fans, of course. I mean, there, there are a lot of people who enjoy the match. It's a great, beautiful sport, the way they play it. It's so beautiful and fast and all that. But I, I mistakenly let the behavior of those hooligans or that sort of culture that I didn't know anything about, that I was just kind of witnessing as an observer. And I allowed that to sort of sour the whole game of soccer which doesn't belong to England. I mean I'm glad that they have the best league in the in the world I think to watch on TV at least but they don't own the game is my point and they, they, especially the hooligans don't own the game. So I started to slowly get back into it so the reason I'm mentioning all this is that when I see videos of hooligans or I hear a news story or I see this documentary all these emotions start flooding back and it's not just about seeing things that happen on one event because I know it's not a one event kind of thing. It, it just brings back a lot of memories and it, it's, it's upsetting in a lot of ways. If you get a chance to watch this documentary, I think the important thing to keep in mind is that it's not a one-off. You can find documentaries on other problems with certain amounts of English fans which really kind of, as an outsider, really kind of speaks volumes about, I think, whether you're, you're looking at something that's a problem or you're looking at something that's a symptom of a problem. And I don't know what it is, because there's plenty of things I can criticize Americans about, but when it comes to that level of sports violence, I'm not aware of any comparison. And to me, when you see, as you'll see in the documentary, when you see an Italian fan who's portrayed in this as uh, taking his daughter to the World Cup final and she, he has to shield her from people throwing bottles at them because they're wearing an Italian jersey. You need to reevaluate how you think as a person, who you are, and what you're doing on the planet. Because th there should be zero tolerance for this kind of stuff. There should be people around those people who are throwing bottles at people, especially little girls, and going like, hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Like, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be friends with you. This is grotesque what you're doing. And one of my favorite parts of the documentary, I don't know if it's, it's weird to say favorite because it's violence, but one of my, one of the things that made me a little bit happier about humanity, if that's not too much of an overstatement, is when some of the fans had rushed in to the, to the levels and, and they had gotten past the gates, there were actually fans, English fans who had paid for tickets and were fighting the ones who, who had rushed uh, into the stadium. Almost as if a way to, it felt to me like almost as if a way to say like, you're kind of making us all look bad and we're kind of sick of what you do, uh, you know, match after match or year after year. We see this thing happening and we're not gonna stand for it. I thought that was, a, a, to be honest, a great moment. And there was even a moment where, uh, and I don't know if I like this, but there was a moment where an English fan was yelling at one of the stewards to, to do your job, and he was really screaming at him. And I feel really bad for the stewards because it feels... This is another part of the documentary that, that, that was puzzling, was that you feel like that they weren't given support. I don't know where the police were. Like, you just let these this group of people fester outside. It's, it's really troubling. The documentary is troubling. Uh, the, there's no other way to put it. Not just from what you see fans do, the certain fans who are engaging in those behaviors. Also, the police force and 
I, I feel bad for the security at Wembley because you know they're probably just trying to make sure everyone has a good experience in a way and maybe they should have had things uh, a little bit better run but it didn't seem like that the the police force were helping them in a way that that was useful because you you see all these people and they said this in the documentary but i can't believe nobody died so even though it's troubling i think it's worth the watch it's one of those things that you probably won't watch again um, but it's definitely worth observing for an hour and change because you get to kind of see this part of a culture that um, exists. Hopefully most people who watch this are horrified. I, I don't know, a lot of mixed feelings. And um, if you saw it and you had a different take on it, I'd love to know what your take is. Again, there's a lot of flaws in between the, the borders here in the United States. Um, but I'm really happy that I can go to a sports match here in what in, in whatever sport and you don't have to worry about uh, anything like that happening, at least not at the moment.